Good day, ladies and gentle ponies. Penny Wrights here, analyzing the pony world with a fine sharpened quill. Today we look at not just the friendship part of My Little Pony, but more on the magic part. There's so much we don't fully know when it comes to magic being used in this world, like levitation, teleporting, super speed, sorry Rainbow Dash, and becoming David Blaine. Then there's how magic is used on others, like changing Paris Bright's diets, light clone purposes, cutie mark stealing, and rainbow blasting villains good. I think there's some gray areas on how we're supposed to see magic, and for that, we're going to be examining a few spells used along with its ethics. And don't worry, no testing or no taking will be needed. <sighs> some learn differently. Let's get this hoopla started. So while re-watching past episodes, I came across Season 2's Lesson Zero and Twilight's less charming moments. What is thinking? You're a good student. You can do this. Oh, but what if I can't? You can. You just have to keep it together. Keep it together. Hi, girls. Well, <clears throat> anyway. What got my attention was the spell Twilight used in her Smarty Pants doll called the Want It Need It spell. Needless to say, I couldn't help but be a bit concerned with the idea of subtle brainwashing for the purpose of causing a friendship problem. For homework. Makes you think she's a lot more like that Discord than you would believe. And then I couldn't help but remember a very similar looking spell used by Barbie Princess and Full Sitter Princess Cadence. The heart-shaped magic and the effects are very similar, but with a slightly different result between just getting along again to highly aggressive obsession. It might have to do with the spellcaster's mental health since one is pretty calm and the other was... Twilight. Hi, girls! I'm not gonna stop using these clips. Also, let's back up and realize what type of magic user Twilight is. She's very by the book when practicing anything and won't really go off the book with any spell performed. So if you have someone who doesn't create or modify spells already written, then this wanted needed spell already existed and I'm pretty sure Cadence taught it to her. Now, if she did teach her this spell while Twilight was very young, first of all, bad babysitter. Who teaches a love spell to a child? She may have been a smart protege, but didn't really have much social boundaries to know not to do that. But then again, Cadence used this spell without really asking these two if it was okay. Now, if Cadence did teach this spell to Twilight at a young age, it's possible she might have missed a few things since the spell went completely crazy and got anybody who looked at the doll while Cadence only affected the ones that she was casting on. Maybe a miscast, or that really doesn't matter if you have to be in the right headspace to mess with other people's headspace. Now, take Starlight Glimmer, our designated sociopath who uses magic at every inconvenience, also known as Season 1 Twilight. Need to talk to someone? Magic them to be articulate. Need to bond with a baker? Magic the perfect cake and look like a show-off. Need to hang out with other friends of your teacher? Magic them to do things they've already done while being under a spell. Now, what makes her magic seem wrong while Cadence's love spell is just fine? Keyword, intent. Wikipedia describes the word intent as a mental state that represents a commitment to carrying out an action or actions in the future. Intention involves mental activities such as planning and forethought. Planning and forethought, hmm. How much planning and forethought comes with a Paris Bright attack, turning your friend into a vampire bat, and reading an unfinished spell that altered your friend's destinies? Now, it's not to say these were mostly on purpose and Twilight had to think on the fly on what to do, but it doesn't mean it was probably a good idea either. And I want to see intent used in a different way than what's defined. So instead, combine the idea of intent with the idea of purpose. Definition of purpose is the reason for which something is done or created for which something exists. And I think that's where the ideas of certain spells interfere with ethics. Was the spell's purpose for the caster's gain or for the one the spell was casted on? The best episode for this would probably be Every Little Thing She Does, 
with Starlight slightly brainwashing the rest of the main six with the intent on making it look like they're hanging out as a friendship lesson. This was nowhere near for the purpose of anybody else but Starlight, and not really a good thing since the rest of them were magically hung over after the spell was broken. A lot of spells done by Starlight in the first few episodes were for her benefit in making friends. As innocent as it seems, it's why she's called a sociopath. Not much regard for others like making a cake with magic faster than an earth pony, making someone talk more than they want to, and the entire plot of every little thing she does makes it more open with her magic. Compared to Twilight, who is bookbound, Starlight can alter and mix spells to fulfill her needs. Again, why a character like that would be seen as not fully good, her purpose for spells become more about others later on. An example would be All Bottled Up, where she tries not getting angry at Trixie, a feat I'm sure we all would love to have, and does so by keeping her emotions, specifically anger, in a literal bottle hidden away. That is until it breaks and any pony around her gets her anger and starts yelling at Trixie. Oh, you ruined my tea cakes! You just had to give Twilight those smelly pretzels! You don't pay attention when I'm trying to teach you! Ah, uh, it's the little things you can enjoy. In this case, there was no intent on infecting the ones around her, but her purpose was not to upset Trixie. I don't deny a lot of accidents could have been prevented if Twilight had moments like this. Due to magic changing the Paris Bright's diet, it caused them not to eat food, but everything and anything else. Due to changing the vampire's diet to not attack Applejack's farm, the spell backfired on Fluttershy, turning her into a vampire weekend fan. Even the fact that she was quick to use a reform spell on Discord before just talking to him and keep calm and flutter on shows there's still some gray areas on how magic is used. Even a lot of random bits of magic like the love potion in Hearts and Hoops Day and Hearts Desire potion from the cutie pox had negative effects. Oh, but looky here! Another love-based magic that had good intent but didn't work out. I don't know what it is about love and magic that makes the gray area between what is okay and what is not okay hard to decide on. I showed both clips of Twilight's Love It Wanted spell and Cadence's Love spell to a friend without any context of the episode, and he pointed out that Twilight uses mind control and Cadence uses charming abilities, similar to Greek goddess Aphrodite's or Cupid's abilities with arrows. So maybe it goes along with the caster's special talent and their cutie mark as well. Cadence has the crystal heart as a cutie mark, and nobody else in the show really has a heart as the main focus. It's in Apple Bloom's cutie mark, but not a strong focus when it has the CMC colors and an apple involved in its design. There's other background ponies like Lemon Heart and Nurse Red Heart, but not really much is done with it. So this is probably a magic Cadence learned to use, and it probably gave her her status as a princess and a way to bring love to others. Which is a little confusing, seeing as she's probably a teenager when she becomes a princess, since she had wings and a cutie mark when she was babysitting Twilight. Twilight's talent is just in magic itself. Learning it, to be specific. So she learned a spell that was probably taught to her at an early age, and used it when she was under mental distress, something no spellcaster should do, otherwise it ruins the caster's purpose. In the Love Poisons case in Hearts and Hoops Day, this was a spell used by the CMC to make two single people who haven't interacted with each other before into shipping fuel. Well, been guilty of that a few times. The difference is usually what is bad about any spell against free will. It's against free will. They did make an attempt in the normal way with setting them up, and then when nothing happened, they forced it with the magic potion. Now, there was some final print issues that made this backfire for the Cutie Mark Crusaders, but this was probably the only implication that there was both no negative intent nor personal desire for the casters. The writers could have easily done this as another Cutie Mark adventure. I don't know, Cutie Mark matchmaking, maybe? But none of that was present. It was just three kids trying to do something nice for the teacher they like, with the potion possibly causing Cheerly and Big Mac to be unable to do their jobs 
is when the panic set in about messing with people's heads or hearts or genitals. Ain't it nice when small children can get that message, but not the full grown adults who think they know better? I think in Cadence's situation with her magic, it is an ability. And with an ability, it can be learned by others like Twilight. Rarity has a gem finding spell that she taught Twilight regardless of having nothing to do with fashion like Rarity. And yet was able to use it effectively in Dog and Pony Show for finding her. It's really up in the air, but we've seen how cutie marks do affect characters regardless of how badly they change their rules. So maybe it really is what I mentioned before, being that this is Cadence's true purpose as a princess and how she got her cutie mark. I don't know. Using magic in this case still rubs me the wrong way. I mean, it did things like that right from the first season where you can just magic villains into good, but... Hmm, let's try and put it in a lighter way. Cadence has a cutie mark that's a heart-shaped gem. Now with her being the ruler of the Crystal Empire and the magic plot device that protects it being called the Crystal Heart, but I don't think this is just any crystal we're talking about. In this case, we're looking at pure diamond, and I mean pure in the strongest context. I did some research on gemstones and meanings, so when I got to the definition of diamonds, this crystal power makes a lot more sense. Diamonds are said to be a healing stone that encourages you to see, seek, and radiate the light within yourself. Diamond virtues also include purity, trust, innocence, healing, love, and protects against negative energy. Pair that with our first introduction to Cadence in a wedding episode, and we got ourselves a character developing head cannon. It's interesting that some of these traits do fit Cadence's personality, and it makes sense that her magic is not necessarily forcing love, but purifying the heart. How her magic is used is usually getting rid of negative energy. From a fighting couple to love sucking insects, it's a bit clearer that she is meant to represent purity and healing, also traits that make her less of a unicorn Barbie doll. Like there are many ways to be a girl, there are many ways to love, and I think that's a good representation of all those ways. I'm Penny Wrights, and always keep a diamond with you. It'll keep away all negativity, even on Tinder.